Hello there, it's me, Sari, here again. And today I thought I'd make some shrink plastic figures. I just remembered how fun it is to make these shrink plastic uh, you, charms, so to speak. I mean, you could go for just a text, as I have done here, with one of Tim Holtz's text stamps, Live the Life, you've imagined. You could also take his stamps and just stamp them on that shrink plastic. You can also die cut a shape and stamp on it and then shrink it. Let's see if I have anything more. Well, there's a bird cage here and some retro circles and such. And here's a game card. So these are pretty fun to play around with, I think. So what I have started with is to cut the shrink plastic to size before I die cut them. And I have uh, taken a big heap of dies from Tim Holtz here. So this is actually the picture wheel die from Tim Holtz. And it looks like this. And I thought I'd, I'd give it a go, stamping, or just die cutting it first, actually. So I'll be running these through. And then I'll stamp them. And here I've got that wonderful postage die. And I'm thinking that one actually fits a big sentiment or something like that. And when you have these movers and shapers dies, it's really important to keep this one in here. Because that, because that one actually makes it easier to pop out the paper or the material after, after, after you have die cut, cut it. Or run it through your die cutting machine actually. So there you have it. Wonderful, wonderful. And you could also make this one into a Polaroid frame perhaps. You might have some fun with that actually. I'm not going to throw that one away yet. So let's see what's next. Here I've got something that is called Baroque. And it's pretty nice actually. And this one is also a movers and shapers. I'm going to take that one out, the inner piece of the movers and shapers, that is sold separately. And then I'm just going to run this one through. And when it comes to die cutting Beggs dies from Sussex, the thick dies, you only need to use the two plastic sheets. So you needn't hassle with anything else really. And let's see, now I've got something that's called styled labels. And it's a set of two dies actually. So I need another one of those. So I'm putting one in each hole as you can see here. And I'm just going to take these pieces. It seems like that one isn't going to fit perfectly. I wonder if that one would be better there, and then just keep that one there, perhaps. And now it's up to me to actually keep these in place while I put that one there. I hope it works. And there you have a label, there's another one. I'm going to take those away. And then I've got the pocket watch, I think this one is called. Pocket watch frame. I'm just making sure that I'm keeping that one there. You see how easy it cuts? A big beautiful clock shape there. So 
So let's see, here I've got something that's called Vintage Cabinet Card. And this one is also a Movers and Shapers die. So I'm going to take that one away and keep the bigger piece here. Hanging sign. This is one of the first dies I actually bought. It, there it is, the text. Hanging sign. And I'm just going to go for the sign thing there. And I do like it because it has the holes already there. So here it is. Let's see what I've got here. Here are some gadget gears. And here is a vintage telephone. I thought that would be fun actually to just die cut into a shape. Look at that. And then I got the TikTok. So here you have it. It didn't cut through properly, I have to do that later then. And then there's the sewing room die, and I thought I'd give it a go with this dress form. I think I need to cut these corners off because this will be put in at an angle. So now it's shaped something like that. And in that case I can actually run it through this machine without it getting stuck and destroying the shape. There it is. Some stars. These are from Sussex. This is what they look like. And what else? There are some hearts as well. And this is also a big die from Sussex. Primitive hearts, this one is called actually. I thought it could be cute to have a sentiment in this one, like so. And then the final one. A pair of angel wings. Big wings like that.
there we have it so now I can stow away the machine and I can start stamping and I have to figure out what to put where really so I'll actually do the sorting out and what I'll do is that I'll stamp with stays on ink because that is an ink that dries quickly on plastic and such. So I'm using the jet lag stays on and I'll be back when I have stamped all these. And when it comes to stamping you don't really get second chances uh, or unless you wipe it off. Let's see if I can wipe it clean. Let's see if I can wipe, wipe it clean. Well, it isn't that easy now, is it? A at least with, not with a baby wipe. Let's see, this is an all-purpose cleaner. Perhaps you need a stays on solvent cleaner. Let's see if I have any. I do have something like this. But the purpose for stays on, I'm not sure if it's going to work. Let's see. You know, it actually worked. So you could go on, do it one more time. And get your second chance that way. I'm just going to let that one dry and I'll come back to that later. So let's see, you also need to be steady on your hand because this is a slippery surface. So you really need to pay attention to how you're putting that stamp over that piece there. Let's see if I can show it to you. I'm just going to put my head in, I suppose. I'm just making sure that the stamp fits. And then I'm just going to give it a press from up. And now that I know that I did fail with the other one there, making sure that I give it some good pressure, and then I'm just going to poke it off like this. Give it a little nudge and hope it will fall off by itself. So there you have it. If life doesn't give you the game you want, then invent a new one. So I'm hoping that one will dry up soon enough and I might as well just take this stays on cleaner, put it on the stamp like so. And clean it up with it like so. You see it comes off really nicely. You know, sometimes I'm a, I am a good girl cleaning the stamps up, but mostly I'm not. Can't be bothered. And you do have to scrub it a little. It is, isn't that easy, even if you are using the stays on. But of course, it's easier than with the other, any other method, I suppose. So I'll be stamping and I'll be back. So. Now it's time to start um, heat setting these or just um, heating them up with a heat embossing tool. You could of course put, them, put these in an oven, but I do believe that it would be a bit difficult to be able to flatten all of these out as soon as I get them out of the oven. So I actually rather do it just one by one. So I have uh, stamped the Eiffel Tower from Tim Holtz and this text as I showed you before. And uh, I also dyed this one in with some stays on ink, both the brown and the black one. And as for this clock, I just put on two hues of uh, grey. And I stamped a clock inside this clock, actually. And then I stamped the bingo board on this uh, opening there. London. And then there's the globe, and I'm thinking, I'm hoping that these will be able to fit in each, into each other when I'm ready. So I would have myself a clock with an with the earth on it, and then life doesn't have to be perfect to be wonderful. 
good friends don't let you do stupid things alone and then there's the old man here and the cogs I actually also dyed in with some stays on this one is made with the brown and this one is made with the black and then there are two more courage is being yourself every day in a world that expects you to be someone else and then here's the first one so actually the wing that I had before that was a new one so let's see if I can make these I have pre-punched the holes uh, into them, so I'll be able to hang them onto something. And I used my crocodile to do so, but be beware. Actually, I close my eyes when I do that, because they have a tendency to pop up and uh, land uh, practically everywhere. So I'm just going to take a pair of tweezers, and I'm just going to put that in the hole. That will also give me the control of actually keeping this one in place. Let's see what happens now. It'll take some time before it gets heated up. And you do have to put the heat on all of it. Now you see it starts happening. And it does curl a bit. You have to be patient here. And just let it have its course. And now you see that it has curled up like so. Let's hope I'll be able to pull it out. And I actually managed to, when I had something like this before, I just let it cool and I start it all over again, but I'm just trying to let that one come off. It's just, just so typical, isn't it, when you're making a film. This one has got stuck to it, and that's the drawback, of course, working with these long things. But now, you see, just let's see if I can make it work. If I can make it go back to the flats, or the straight mode here. This one turned out to be a bit tricky. It's a good lesson and learn thing here, I suppose. Just don't get it. Well, it has turned twisted. Let's see now. So this one has shrunk as much as it can shrink. It's a bit crooked and I don't like it really. So I'm trying to make it straight. Because now that I'm going to flatten it out with my clear block, it's going to stay this way. And I just have to wiggle it a little and then it's dry, or actually it's set. So this one turned out to be a little bit crooked actually. Let's see if I can make something out of it if I preheat it. Or just heat it once more. It's a bit tricky because I don't want to touch it, you see. It's really hot. Life doesn't have to be perfect, right? That's what Tim Holt says. So it's a bit crooked. Well, that's it. Let's go for the wing then. And I'm just going to put that tweezer there in the hole. And this one starts to curl up pretty nicely also. And the drawback of course is that it does fling to the other side, but this one actually turns out rather nice, don't you think? And since I do have this um, Rangers embossing tool, these don't fly as much as I, I did with the other heat tool I had. So now I can just take this, press it for a second or two. It's a bit soft there, but you see how wonderful it turns out. Just look at my goodness. Well, it's, it's easy, really. To... You see, wouldn't that be nice to put behind a girl or something, so she can be an angel? So just be patient and don't give up. Practice.
So here's the other one. I think they are grand. So let's move on to something London-like. I haven't actually punched this one. Let's see if I can make it work anyway. It is a bit exciting with this plastic. I mean, it really has, has it have its own life. So there we went. And I'm using a cutting board here, not to destroy my surface table, the working surface here. Let's see how I will end up with a cogwheel here. I think it's better to just let it have its course. Just look at that wonderful... Well, I can see myself die-cutting these. Oh, that is so cute. My goodness. This is it. I actually found a way to make my own cogs now. Smaller size. This is beautiful. And you see, it does go through, so it is black on both sides. My goodness. This was a happy moment. You know, it's actually better not to use the tweezers, because they, because then it can have its own course there, as I told you. My goodness, I'm in love. I am in love. Just look at this. My goodness. So cute. I need to make a hundred of them, I feel like, now. Let's see. This one turned out a little bit, little bit wonky. Not much I can do about it, I suppose. It's cute anyway. Let's see how this one turns out. Just love how this one turns out. Really nice. Let's see about this telephone. I'm afraid that one will will be a bit of a hassle. I'm ready with my pliers. Just have to believe in the process, I suppose. I wish I had someone to hold this embossing tool for me. So I could actually have another hand to pull with. And here's where the patience sets in also, is once more. Or the lack of patience, I suppose. So I'm doing pretty good at job, I suppose. So, I'm going to twist it, turn it over. Yeah, 
it does want to go inwards, well, I suppose I could be happy with that one. Isn't that one cute? Just look at that one. Awesome. Really awesome. And you know, I actually do have this one. Perhaps I could just leave them as they are, or I could colour these in. Let's see if I could just leave them as they are, but I'm going to use a pen to colour them in. The cutting board is a bit hot now, but... Let's see what happens when I do this. My goodness, it fell, came, came, up, came off. Oh, so tiny. I might just want to just take that one away, I suppose, if I can. And just flatten it out. Let's see if I can put it in there. Not completely. I suppose that would have... Yeah, I'm not sure if it would have helped if I had it kept it in there. Let's see how this one turns out. Up he goes. Come on, legs. He turned out fabulous as well. Look at him. Really nice. Let's do the good thing, good friends one. So there it is. And if you would like to, you can actually colour this one in with some ink, um, alcohol ink afterwards. So there that one is. Let's see about this one. The round things tend to actually curl out by themselves really nicely. So if you can uh, die cut some round shapes, you're really in for a treat, I must say. Thank you. 
And let's see about this one. This is the final one, actually. It's a shame this one is so crooked. It's like the Leaning Tower of Pisa, I think. Let's see what I can make out of this. Well, it's a wonky clock, I must tell you, but it's all right, I suppose. Turn out a little bit wonky, it doesn't matter. Oh my goodness, I don't want that. Now it's stiff. <laughs> Look at this. Nice. So, I guess this one is out of the question putting in there, but uh, well, it was nice to try it anyway. I'm not sure if I'll be able to do anything with this one. Let's see. want to go well it's a bit better perhaps let's see if I can improve this one as well just by heating it hoping it'll get it to its shape It isn't a fit. <laughs> Stupid me, these are hot. Well, now it's getting in there. Let's see. I suppose it's a question of actually getting it right also, because I don't think this is a proper circle. But let's see if I can make it work. have to do I suppose let's see if I can make the telephone work as well this one could be a more, bit more tricky I suppose well It's not too bad. So now I made these, but I absolutely love these. You know, I could see myself making lots of these, really. And if you could also die cut these 
out of with the spellbinder dice. Well, then I could actually have myself a real blast here. So here are my cute little shrink plastic things. I didn't uh, stamp on all of them, the ones that I did before, but this is a nice way to show you that you can actually make yourself your own decorations. So I'm thinking that what if you would put this, these wings behind a man like this, or just perhaps a girl even? Could be a nice idea, you see. Let him have big, big wings. Well, I think that's it for me. I thank you for your patience, and I hope you are inspired to make your own shrink plastic figures. Bye-bye.